Hi everybody, so my name is Sean Grassick and I'm delighted to bring you the latest edition of the LGFA Research Pod. So I'm going to be giving you just a taste of my PhD project, which is titled An Investigation into Current and Novel Practices of High Intensity Interval Training to Elicit Improvements in the Performance of Team Sport Athletes. So I'm under the supervision of Dr. Neve Kelleher, Dr. David Kelly and Dr. Kieran O'Cohan in Athlone Institute of Technology. So I'm also part of the recently developed SHE Research Group, which aims to bridge the gender gap in the area of sport, health and exercise science research. OK, then. So first of all, before we can prescribe training to any type of athlete, we need to know the demands of the sport. So what are the physiological demands of Gaelic football? So it's predominantly characterized by low to moderate intensity activity, interspersed then with periods of repeated, short duration, high intensity, intermittent bouts, completed over short distances. So when I say a high intensity effort, what I mean here is say your accelerations, decelerations, forward, backward and sideways shuffles, kicking, jumping, and then say contact from the opposition while you're in possession of the ball. So when I say submaximal efforts, what I mean here is simply when you're walking and jogging, when you're typically out of possession of the ball. So these physical demands require players to have a high level of technical and tactical awareness, in addition to well-developed aerobic capacities and anaerobic capacities, which is going to be measured via high intensity endurance capacity, as well as then well-developed sprint performance. As performance is going to be dependent on a combination of strength, power, reactive strength and aerobic and anaerobic fitness. So then aerobic capacity, what is aerobic capacity? So when I speak about aerobic capacity, what I'm referring to is an athlete's ability to take in, transport and convert oxygen to energy during exercise. So why is this important? So this is key for Gaelic football as it can allow players to travel greater distances and help them recover from these high intensity in intermittent phases of play which can allow players then to maintain their physical condition during the game and then over the course of the season, as the aerobic energy system plays a vital role in an athlete's performance due to being the predominant supplier of energy during match play, highlighted by 70% of energy during a Gaelic football game being derived from your aerobic metabolism. So then, high-intensity endurance capacity. What is high-intensity endurance capacity? So it is seen as a vital aspect of performance for our field-based team sport athletes, with a high score in the yo-yo intermittent recovery test, which is a test used to measure an athlete's high intensity endurance capacity, having a moderate correlation with higher match running performance and having a significant correlation then with high intensity running in female soccer players. So why is this important? So players must be able to perform short sprints, change direction, accelerate, decelerate, and execute technical skills repeatedly in order to be successful. So brief periods of intense actions can decide the outcome of a match as they can be the difference between you tackling an opponent before they can score or you outrunning a defender and scoring. So this nicely brings us on to sprint performance then. So what is sprint performance? So this is a, fun, this is a fundamental aspect of performance for field-based team sport athletes and it's typically measured via sprinting, distance, sprinting over uh, set distances. So say 10 meters, 20 meters, 100 meters and so on. So why is it important to our Gaelic footballers? So it is important that sprint performance can make the different difference in certain scenarios, such as if you were chasing a ball down against a defender. And um, so if you have a bit more uh, well-developed sprint performance, um, it's more likely that you are going to get to that ball before the, op before the opposition player and you have the possibility then of scoring. So research in other sports has highlighted that this by straight line sprinting being the most frequent action preceding a goal in soccer, with even a 0.8% impairment in sprint speed capable of having a significant effect on if a player loses a possession to an opponent when they're sprinting for a ball. So this just highlights how important sprint performance can be to our um, athletes. So what type of training can we do with our athletes? So when we think about strength and condition, we automatically envisage a squad of players in a gym. However, much of an athlete's time is going to be spent on a pitch as ultimately we want to develop sport specific skills and improve their match performance, not just see improvements in scores and tests such as their VO2 max and their yo-yo scores. So this makes conditioning a key aspect to an effective training program. So the different types of training we have then. So we've low to moderate intensity continuous training. So this training involves straight line running, jogging, walking and minimal changes of direction over a prolonged period. And it is used by many athletes to increase their aerobic fitness. 
Examples of this would be say just running laps or just jogging in a straight line, for example. So the next type of training we have are small sided games. So these are modifiable games which are played on varied pitch sizes. And for example, if we increase the size of the pitch, it's gonna target an athlete's aerobic system more so. Whereas if we reduce the size of the pitch, it's gonna target their anaerobic system more so. Um, so this is gonna obviously mimic the intermittent high intensity phases of match play. So then we have interval training. So this is a method of training in which rest and exercise intervals durations are altered to target various physiological responses, depending on what your goal is for that session. So this is getting into my research then. So a background then on high intensity interval training. So first of all, what is high intensity interval training or HIIT? So it's defined as exercise, which consists of repeated short to long bouts of high intensity exercise, which is then interspersed by periods of low intensity exercise or complete rest. So why would we do this with our athletes? What's the point? So it's become a popular training modality used by coaches due to its time efficient nature and its ability to target an athlete's neuromuscular, aerobic and anaerobic energy systems. So a host of variables can be manipulated to target specific adaptations when you're programming a session. So you may ask what variables can we manipulate? So key variables include your exercise intensity, the modality you're using. So this can be either are you doing it as a running based session? Are you doing it on a cycle ergometer, a rower, a skier? But then it can also be, is it the session being done on an astroturf? And when a pitch is being done on a track, for example. And then the recovery periods are also going to be another key variable. So how we manipulate these variables is going to be essential to how we exploit desired physiological response. So what methods of high intensity interval training have we got? So there's a variety of different methods we can use with our athletes. So we have short intervals, long intervals, repeated sprint training, and then sprint interval training. This brings us nicely into the, each of the methods. So I'm just going to briefly describe each one. So first of all, we have long intervals, which are performed near an athlete's max aerobic capacity over durations of two to five minutes, which is then separated by short durations of one to three minutes of passive recovery or longer durations then of active recovery, which is between two to four minutes. So what I mean by passive recovery is the athlete is either just standing still or sitting waiting for the next interval, whereas active recovery is going to be either doing um, light, moderate kind of activity, such as jogging or just walking around. So we have short intervals then. So these are intervals that are going to be performed for less than 60 seconds with bouts separated by less than a minute of recovery. And the intensity of these intervals is going to be performed at a maximal intensity at a two to one uh, work to rest ratio. So what this simply means is if you're having an athlete work for 60 seconds, they're then going to rest for 30 seconds. So we now have repeated sprint training. So this is where intervals are performed for about between three to 10 seconds at an all out intensity. So these are going to be all out sprint efforts with each interval then separated by short durations of 15 to 30 seconds of passive recovery. And again, longer durations of active recovery of between about 30 to 60 seconds. Finally, then we have sprint interval training. So this consists of 10 to 30 second all out bouts, all out sprint efforts with the volume being less than 10 reps and then recovery being between two to four minutes. So I have specifically decided to focus my research on sprint interval training and um, specifically when, within HIT due to a variety of reasons. So simply um, one of the reasons is SIT results in a limited aerobic metabolic demand, which basically means it doesn't task the aerobic um, energy system too much. A large anaerobic glycolytic demand, which means it's going to target the more high intensity phases of play and has the potential to improve. So aerobic and anaerobic and sprint performance following relatively short interventions of between two to eight weeks. So this is why I've decided to focus my area in, or my research in this area. So I'm briefly just gonna talk about my first study, which is being prepared for submission, which is the effects of sprint interval training on performance in field-based invasion team sport athletes, a systematic review and meta analysis. So what were the aims of this study? So we wanted to evaluate the effectiveness of SIS to improve aerobic capacity compared to traditional methods of training, such as endurance training, small sided games, and then other modalities of HIT. So we then also wanted to investigate the effects of SIT on repeated sprint ability, high intensity endurance capacity, sprint performance, and jump performance with field-based team sport athletes. So how did we go about doing this? So first of all, we needed to complete a strict definition of field-based team sports to ensure that we were including the right sports in this. And then we also needed to create a strict definition of what we class sprint interval training as. 
So we then completed a strict uh, comprehensive literature search of three identified databases using our strict inclusion and exclusion criteria. And once this was completed, we completed data extraction out of the identified articles. So what were the results? We, from 4,783 articles, we identified that seven met the inclusion criteria with 104 participants included in all seven uh, papers with 11 being female and 93 being male. So then within the SIT training group, we had 56 participants with six being female and 50 being male compared to other training modalities. So this automatically highlights to us that there's a lack of research in the area of sprint interval training as a whole, and then specifically within female athletes. So what were the main findings then? So we found that sprint interval training had a significant effect on high intensity endurance capacity and 10 meter sprint performance but did not result in significant improvements in aerobic capacity, jump performance, 20 meter sprint performance, or repeated sprint ability. So this has been contradictory to previous reviews on SIT's effect on aerobic capacity, which showed SIT to have a moderate effect and small to moderate effect on aerobic capacity. So other reviews consisted of predominantly untrained and recreationally active participants, and um, with one study having only a proportion of trained athletes. However, my review consisted of entirely trained field-based team sport athletes, and this may be the reason that no significant effect was seen with sprint interval training as on various aspects of performance, as almost any training stimulus will result in enhancement in performance in untrained individuals. So then, we just have another few main findings. So first of all, injury prevention. So as we know, hamstring injuries are one of the most recurrent non-contact injuries, which have been reported to contribute to almost 40% of muscular injuries in Gaelic football. So players who reach greater than 85% of their max velocity at least once a week are at a greater risk of muscular injury in comparison to those who reach 95% of their max velocity once per week. So typically, prevention strategies are aimed towards strength and plyometric type training, However, with these movements, they fail to activate similar levels of muscle activation as when you're actually max maximally sprinting. Thus, by sprinting via methods such as sprint interval training, this could be a method that could prevent lower limb injury because you're going to be activating the same amount of muscle activation at, during sprinting as obviously you would be in within a game. So the time-saving capabilities then of sprint interval training. So improvements in performance in aspects such as high intensity endurance capacity and sprint performance have been shown by reducing habitual training by 20% and replacing this remaining training with sprint interval training. Endurance training has been shown to require a 12 and a half times greater training commitment than SIT in order to see similar improvements in performance. This just highlights the time efficient aspect of SIT. So, Finally, then, the principle of specificity. So another possible factor responsible for an increase in performance in high-intensity endurance capacity and sprint performance may be a result of the principle of specificity. So this, uh, the principle of specificity is a core principle of exercise physiology, and it's predicted that the closer a training session is to the desired outcome, so the closer your training session is to what you want to achieve from that training session, the greater the outcome is going to be on athletic performance. So then this brings us on to my next study. So it's looking at the high intensity interval training practices in competitive level team sports. So although there's an increasing body of literature to support the use of high intensity interval training to develop an athlete's neuromuscular, aerobic and anaerobic systems, as well as sprint performance, it's not clear how coaches actually prescribe HIT. So what are the aims of our study? So we want to investigate the practices of competitive level team sport coaches with the objectives then being to investigate obviously current practices in field-based team sports. We want to examine if the time of the season actually impacts the coach's prescription. So this is going to be saying does pre-season differ from in-season. We want to explore if differences exist in the prescription of HIT between uh, competitive level teams and then comparing that to say your academy and underage teams. And then we want to identify if HIT practices vary between male and female field-based team sports. So how do we got plan about going about this? So first of all, we've designed our questionnaire and we're currently in the process of getting it validated. So that's being done at the minute. Once this has been completed, we are going to recruit coaches with a minimum of one year's coaching experience with sample then sections in the questionnaire are going to be coach background information, current team information, 
and then we're going to have questions on each method of hit. So then just to finish up some take home messages. So the time saving capabilities of SIT. So SIT may be an alternative uh, training method to endurance training for field based team sport athletes with a significant reduction in training volume and time commitment, which can be crucial for these for our Gaelic football uh, Gaelic footballers. As these athletes have hectic training schedules and then also when you bring into account the fact they have work and college commitments on top of this. So the key benefit then is improvements in performance in, in key aspects of performance for these athletes in say their high intensity endurance capacity and sprint performance have been shown following relatively short periods of two to eight weeks. Then we have the principle of specificity. So again, it's predicted that the closer a training session is to the aspect of performance that we want to improve, the better the outcome is going to be. So this is indicative of the majority of training induced adaptations that take place within muscle fibers, which have been recruited during a session. So basically by us completing training at a high intensity, it will improve high intensity aspects of performance. And then finally, um, one of the most interesting uh, take home messages I believe, is SIT may be an effective tool for coaches to implement with additional benefits to performance enhancements, such as injury prevention. So as sprinting has been shown to reduce the risk of hamstring injuries, with hamstring injuries being one of the most reoccurring non-contact injuries and have been reported to um, result in 40% of muscular injuries in uh, GA. So it's believed that by us exposing players to a period of high speed running and sprinting, it can act as a vaccine for players in regards to preventing muscular injuries. And that's everything from me today, guys. Um, I'd like to just say a big thanks to everyone at the LGFA for giving me a chance to present my research to you guys today. I hope everyone can kind of take something from it. If anyone has any questions for me about my research or anything, you can kind of contact me on my email, which is on the screen there, or you can get me on Twitter either. I'm act quite active on both. Thanks very much, guys.